Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Never What's stop that dancing. I didn't shave. Pardon me. Yeah. <laughs> it happens. What's going I on, everybody? Look, I wanted to look French Canadian. So I Oh, okay. Me. The French touch. Oui, oui, monsieur. Yes, yes. Uh, nice to see you, Bill. Nice to see you again. I've seen you a couple of times lately. Chris, same thing. It's nice to be uh, on the podcast with you guys. And uh, it's funny because I, uh, I put a post on my Facebook earlier this evening reminding my friends and fans that uh, something like 46 years ago, Bill Hapter wrote the first story of Jacques oh, Rougeau yeah. when I was Jerry Roberts in Atlanta, Georgia, doing jobs. In 1978, and I remember going to a, a little quick stop. They're a quick store, and they're going into the, And then I saw the magazines in those days were all on the walls. You know, you'd yeah. see all the wrestling magazines. Yeah. And then I picked it up, and I started looking, and then I saw a whole picture of me with Bill Hapter doing that for me. You know, I uh, <laughs> that was amazing, Bill. That well, that, amazing. that was, you know, those were good days, and it was me and <laughs> a whole group of editors there, I was the face of the magazines. Everybody thinks I own the magazines and all this stuff, but I was. But but you were one of the great guys who always uh, cooperated. You and your brother uh, Raymond, who at one point we did a vote, and the readers voted him the sexiest male wrestler alive. Do you remember that? Yeah, he is a Tom Selleck of wrestling, you know, and uh, it's <laughs> with his mustache. And uh, it's funny, Raymond's doing so well today. You know, he's the mayor of his of his own city, you know. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, he's amazing. Raymond's always been amazing. Always a good businessman. He always had the brains. He had the brains between both of us. So, but he was a uh, he's he's just an amazing guy, Raymond. He's 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 on his second term of being the mayor, and uh, and you know it takes a lot. You know, I think of Jesse the Body Ventura. I think that did that too. That he was a mayor, if I'm not mistaken, or a governor. He was governor, a governor, yes. Yeah, yeah, he was a governor. Minnesota. But you, you got to have some great education, you know, to to to, to be able to, to move in the politics. What city? Whatever. What city are you talking about? Rodden. Me? He's in the city of Rodden, Quebec, okay. and um, and and yeah, he's uh, he he's the boss of the city. But it's so it's so amazing because. I, every time I talk to him, like, you know, how do you like doing being the mayor? Like, you know, what kind of pressure do you have? He says, I don't have any pressure at all. He says, I have a team with me. He says, my team votes. I just, we're all a team. So he says, I'm just a face. But he says, so he really relies on his companions and work, you know, that uh, that makes him a strong team. And so, so so I'm very happy for him. He's given a That's nice great. image to the Rougeau name again. Very nice. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, you know already. Uh, now you know this is a former WWE Intercontinental Champion, former WWE Tag Team Champion, Jacques Rougeau, the Mountie is joining us once again. Uh, we'll join Bill and I for the first yeah. time as a, as a duo, but uh, he's been on the show before with just myself. So it's going to be uh, extra fun. It's great to have you again. Before we go any further with that, with asking you any questions and things like that, plug uh, your school, man. You got some really cool projects. Uh, the uh, Academy. Yeah. yeah, the Wrestling Academy is amazing. It's not a school, Chris. It's a competition in Canada. It's actually mm -hmm. become the biggest wrestling competition around the globe right now. Nice. It's amazing. We're in our third year, and it's like we started that three years ago, and uh, and, and we have a contest where I bring all the wrestlers, all the independent wrestlers from Canada, from Vancouver to Nova Scotia and everywhere in between, and I bring them into Montreal, and we have like four shows. We have two quarterfinals, and then we have semifinals, and finals and it's like there's big prizes to win the win like like uh the last two years uh they, they uh, the first year they won four prizes of five thousand dollars and then they wow. spent three months three months at the nightmare factory with cody rhodes billy gunn and qt marshall a three-month free uh training camp mm -hmm. and uh, that had for the last two years it's been like that but last year the prizes were ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars and there was three winners and this year there's four winners of ten thousand dollars but this year we're going to Big Lucha. We're going to Bandito's gym. Where I want to show them uh, a different style of wrestling, you know, because uh, in, in 78, I went to Mexico to wrestle myself and I brought so many tools back in my toolbox. When I came from down there, I learned so much. So it's a great, great competition and, uh, and it's fun. And the fun part about this competition is that uh, I, I get the guys on Zoom. I get the guys on Zoom. Because, you know, some come from the East Coast, some the West Coast. So one month before their match in Montreal, before we fly them in, I get them on Zoom and we put a match together. And I help them. I ask them what they want to do. And we it's heads or tails to see who wins the match. That's not important because we're not judging on that. We're judging on the ability in the ring and the charisma, the suits, the interview before the match. They're really judged to see what kind of professional wrestler they could be. The become. whole package. The whole package. Yeah. And, and, and then the fun part is I put that match on Zoom with them a month ahead of time. So now every night before they go to bed for a month, they could read their sheet go over their match so when they come to montreal they don't have to worry about what's my next move and this and that they already know their heart their their, their, their match by heart so now they could worry more about the interaction with the people and and because they know the guy's going to be in the back after a certain move so they could work the crowd more and they could really get into their role and and the fun part of all this is like although all the match is predetermined once the match is over with they both stand up in the ring side by side, and then the real action starts because the three judges by the ring, they start judging them, and that's not fixed. Mm -hmm. So you're only as good as your last performance. Well, who are the judges? How do the uh... this year? It's awesome. The, last year was QT Marshall, and 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 it was amazing. But this year we got three judges that are you're gonna know, you're gonna freak out when I tell you this. Actually, there's my brother Raymond and myself that are two judges, and the third judge this year is Gino Brito. Oh my goodness! You wow. remember Gino Brito? Very well. Gino? Sure. He was course. an icon in Quebec. He was uh, in the 60s, 70s. His father was Jack Britton. He's the one who brought the midgets into wrestling. You know, like Jack remember Britton. That. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, he wrestled. He was a tag team champion with uh, Tony Tony Parisi. Parisi. In the WWF. Yeah. And, yeah. And uh, the I whole gang. I remember Dom that. Dominic Danucci and then and, and Dino Bravo and oh. all the Italians, you know. So 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 he's gonna be judged this year. So so the great part of this competition is you go into the ring, you perform, and then after that you stand in the middle and you're so vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And then the judges start. We start one by one. Hey, like uh, you, I liked your ability in the ring tonight. Very good. You, I liked your charisma. Very good. I like the way you dress. You put pride in what you do. Uh, I like your interview before your match. Uh, mm -hmm. But tonight. I'm going with you. And mm. then he goes to the semifinals. So nice. so it's amazing because they're gunning for ten thousand dollars. But what happens to the other guy? What happens? He to goes home. Guy? Goes he home empty-handed. Yeah. So this competition it lasts like a nine nine months of preparation. Wow. You know, it's it's because there's a it, it takes nine months to put this together, believe it or not. And and, and so in in one moment, nine months just passes by you. Either you go on or you go home. And, and and you should see the crowd because the crowd is there waiting for the 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 the, 
the opinions of the judges and for the, the who's going to win, who's going to lose. And you should see the talent. The mm. talent fall to their knees because they're sad or sometimes they fall to their knees because they're so happy. Yeah. You know, because it's, a, it's a reality show. So so this show has become really, really popular with the over the last three years. And now it's funny because when I started this competition uh, three years ago, I had uh, 21 inscriptions from Quebec. There's 10 provinces in Canada. So I had so in the province of Quebec only I had 21 inscriptions and I had only 19 inscriptions through the rest of the nine provinces. People didn't believe in the project. And this year there was only like 11 inscriptions from Quebec and there were 70 from Canada. Wow. So the word so the word got out to the real good wrestlers across Canada like hey Rougeau's really paying the money you know what mm. I mean? and this is a great opportunity great visibility I'm doing podcasts around the world now in Australia and in, in, in UK with you guys and everywhere and I'm giving exposure because I'm sending everybody on the website to check out the website because one of the greatest things about this whole competition is the visibility that they're getting for 9 months and if you go on the website which is wrestling-academy.ca or in French, lutacademy.ca. Oui, oui. If you have those there, if you go on the website, it's amazing, Bill. If you go on there, because what you're going to see, yeah. what you're going to find is first of all, you're going to see all the old timers like me that are putting in a good word for the Wrestling Academy participants. You'll see the, uh, I mean, you'll see a Ric Flair, you'll see Undertaker, Bret Hart, you'll see a, uh, uh current angle you'll see you'll see all the big stars all the big all, they're all there uh, bushwhackers tito santana right. go on and on and 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 they all put in a good word to encourage the participant and then if you click on their picture you'll see a video that they're making so yeah. when you go on the website click on the picture and go see the video that they make and then you go down a little lower on the website then you see all the male competitors and if you click on their video you'll see a 30 second highlights of what they do in their career and 15 second promo that's they're asked they're, they're introducing themselves for the tournament and Chris, then if you go I down think you and I, I think you and I may have to move up to Canada and what do you think yeah. let's go and then and, and then if go. you go a little lower we'll do it, if you go brother. a little lower if you go a little lower then you see all the females which is amazing You'll see the talent this year. The caliber is so strong this year. So all this is starting on the September 28th in, in, in Montreal, September 28th. There's the website. So go right. check it out. It's really an amazing website. My girlfriend is responsible for that. And, and, and it starts on September 28th and October 26th are the quarterfinals. And then on November 2nd is the semifinals. The best of the first quarterfinals are going up against the best of the other quarterfinals. And then finally, they're going to the finals on on the sixteenth of November. To uh, look at all these talent that 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 you see there, it's amazing. If you could do, you got the singers, the the hockey players, the the, the, the it's amazing. The people that are just commentating yeah. on giving, wishing good luck to. Uh, there's Tito, and there's a yeah. Then then if you go for you, yeah, if you just click that red thing on the button on the side, you'll see some more that are going to come in that everybody recognizes. Yeah. It's the hockey players, singer. Amazing. And and, and 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 she's a professional singer, but they all go on. Here's a hockey player, Greg Gagne. You know him for sure. Now, who, who is Martin Vachon? Is Martin he Vachon. He's a commentator in French. Like he's just a commentator. I have okay. a lot of kinds. I have all kinds of celebrities that have joined. Uh, like I said, and, and here's all the talent this year. Jeremy Prophet, the one you're seeing there. He's he's uh, he's from Montreal. He won it in the first year in 2022 and then you know vance nevada all these guys these are all great talent aj sanchez john, john these guys you go on go check out click out the videos and look at the girls in there it's absolutely amazing the talent that you have there uh i i, I love the competition this year it's awesome are the shows streamed hey look live? at that referee bill bill look at that referee you see the one on the left there yeah, the email that's the my show. son yeah, That's I can see the resemblance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, are, he, are the shows streamed live where people can see them? Not, not live, Bill, not live, but they're on the website, exactly where you went now on, on WrestlingAcademy.ca. Mm -hmm. About a week later, because we edit it, we take a because since we're not a, a professional company, so we just it's all amateur. Everything is amateur, to be honest with you. The only thing that's great about that is the content. <laughs> the production, the production is horrible, and the commentators are worse because it's me and my <laughs> my brother does a good job. But hey, uh, Raymond, I, yeah, he used to uh, commentate Raymond for the WWE. Yeah, I, I'm I, I'm the shame of it. Me, me, I go like a, <laughs> wow, oh. 
Wow. <laughs> well, you don't have you don't have like the WWE earpieces in your ear where somebody's yeah. controlling you from the back. No, 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 no. We just have fun. It's a competition yeah. where we're right. talking with our heart. We express ourselves. And, and it's just an amazing contest. I, I wish people to come and join and to check this out this year. They're really going to see a, an amazing show that may get really big one day. Yeah, that's awesome, man. This is your YouTube page and all that good jazz. It's funny because I'm living my passion, you know, and it's so fun. It's, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and last year was amazing, too, I got to tell you, because QT Marshall was the judge last year, but he 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 brought so much to the – and the Nightmare Factory brought so much to the competition. Last year, actually, QT was Latin American champion, and yeah. he came and defended his title in Montreal the night of the finals. And he brought with her – he brought with him – I call her Harley Davidson, but her name is Harley Cameron. Yeah. And, and, and she came and she wrestled one of the girls that was eliminated uh, mm. during the competition just to come and give a show. So QT Marshall, you know, I I love him to death. He's he he brought he's he brought great. a lot of credibility. He's great. A lot and of credibility plus, to him. Well, plus he he's a direct link to uh, AEW and other places in the united states where some of your winners may be able to showcase themselves. well not may it bill i'm glad you brought that up i forgot to tell you in the last two years my winners at the wrestling academy would they had tryouts of dark matches at rampage and dynamite because of cutie and and and, and so that was part of the deal cutie just brought it as a gift and, 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 you know, and uh, what an amazing opportunity. My talent like this from Canada that, uh, you know, there's something a lot of people don't know in this in this business, uh, but you guys do. It's, uh, but let me share it with the people out there. You know, there's a lot, a lot of talent that are really ready to be in the big leagues. It's just my father. I remember my father when I was young, he always told me this. He said, there's two ways you make it in the business. Being at the right place at the right time and knowing the right people. Mm -hmm. And all these Canadian talent that are so good. Wait till you watch them in action. They're so good, but they just never were at the right place or at the right time or didn't know the right people. Mm -hmm. So that's why this contest is amazing. Amazing. I feel like I'm a, a trampoline for them to get them exposure and just to give them mm -hmm. a little bit of visibility across the world. And maybe someone somewhere is going to go, hey. That talent's good, man. Maybe so. Hopefully, yeah. that'll happen. QT Marshall, you you spoke of the Nightmare Factor with QT Mar uh, QT, Mar QT Marshall is one of the trainers there, and of course, we know Cody Rhodes is the uh, the founder of that. What are your thoughts on on Cody Rhodes nowadays? Yeah. He got a, a WrestleMania main event coming up against Roman Reigns. What, what are your overall thoughts on Cody's yeah. career? I'm, I'm I'm just so impressed because the last two years, imagine now my my winners of Wrestling Academy, they go to Nightmare Factory, and they got Billy Gunn, QT Marshall, and Cody Rhodes to train them five days a week for three months. Hmm. Could you imagine the opportunity when now and then after that? As we're going along, I see up yep, Cody Rhodes just won the Royal Rumble, I think, and they're up oh, Cody Rhodes this the the main event of WrestleMania, yeah. and I'm going like, wow, what an opportunity! Really, for the winners of Wrestling Academy, like you know, that's that's, that's amazing. Could be bigger, Could and be, you know what? Be to be honest with you, I uh, to be honest with you. I don't know Cody that much. I went to see him at the Nightmare Factory once or twice. Very nice gentleman. But I knew his dad, Dusty yeah. Rhodes. Yeah. Let me tell you something about nice his buddy. dad. His dad, you know that, Bill, because when you wrote that article 46 years ago, I was working for his dad. I, I was working for I was working for Dusty Rhodes and Ole Anderson, and Ronnie West was the referee then. Oh, my and, and he and, and, and he was the assistant booker, yeah. and I was writing with him at the time. And Dusty Rhodes, don't ask me why, he just loved me. And when I went there, it's so funny because when I went to Atlanta in 78, I was, I changed my name, Jerry Roberts, because I was, I knew I was going to be a jobber. I knew I was going to be an extra. I knew I was going to be putting everybody over. So I didn't want to tarnish the Rougeau name. So I changed my name to Jerry Roberts. Yeah. And, 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 and I, so I expected to go there for two months, you know, to put everybody over for two months and then leave. And, 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 uh, and the, the amazing thing about that TBS at the time was the only station that was seen from Los Angeles to Boston, like coast to coast. So I was seen every day on every Saturday, every Sunday on TBS. And, 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 and the funniest thing was after like um, a year and a half, I was still there. Yeah. Dusty kept me. He just loved me. 
I was doing, I was getting beat by everybody, even the brooms. But I, I was, I was there, everybody. I remember. And, 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 but he kept me because I, had, I was a firing little Frenchman, you know, and I gave always yeah. good matches. And the, I remember working with Ric Flair one time, you know, preparing him on the Saturday in the morning. I was very, very young. And I worked with Ric Flair. And, uh, and I remember, uh, I'll never forget that time because when I, when I saw, when I got the TBS in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning, and I, um, I see on the sheet on the wall, I say, uh, Jerry Roberts against Ric Flair. And I go, wow, I'm going against Ric Flair. Holy shit. Holy macro. And I'm going like, Jesus, that's incredible. And and, and, and so, I, so I go up and I wait for him to come in the dressing room. And when he comes in, you know, I'm so nervous. He's the world champion. So I'm so nervous. I'm Jerry Jobber, and he's the world champion. So just don't go together. So, uh, so when he comes in, I look at him, and I go like, excuse me, Mr. Flair. I said, uh, I'm going to be working with you today. You know, I said, what do you want to do? Uh, I says, don't worry about it. We'll call it out there, kid. And that's what he told me. And when we got out in the match, we had a five to six minute match. And, 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 and Bill and Chris, let me tell you something. For five minutes, he told me, grab a headlock. Drop down. Catch me with the drop kick. Give me the hip toss. Give me the head scissors. Do the dive off the top. Cross body this. Cross. Five minutes, I'm kicking his butt. For five minutes, he's the world champion. And I'm Jerry Jobber. And at the very end, I missed the dive off the top. Boom. And he beat me one, two, three. And when I came back in the dressing room, I was so mesmerized, amazed. I, I couldn't understand what was going on, why that happened. And uh, why would he do that? A guy that loses like me all the time, why would he do that? And I went to see him. I said, Mr. Flair, I said, uh, can I ask you a question? He said, sure, kid. What, what's up? And I said, well, why'd you do that? He said, why'd do what? He said, why, why'd you make me look so good? <laughs> you know, I said, it was your time to look good you know your main event in the omni tonight you know he says uh he says let me tell you something kid he says i would have got in the ring and he says i would have swept the ring with you for six minutes i would have beat you he says who would i have beaten now i came in i had a young french canadian surprised me amazed me boom you were great and then i beat you so i beat someone great mm -hmm. yeah and i and i looked at him and i learned a lesson in the business from that day on from that day on, I always learned the business that the, 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 the better the better you make your opponent look when you go over, the better you look. It takes two to tango. There, you took, mentioned about um, uh, all these months of, you know, kind of Zoom and everything like this. And yet there were wrestlers like uh, Randy Savage who used to discuss his matches and then he'd write on his hands in case he <laughs> forgot, right? He'd write wow. on his hands what he was going to do for the next spot. So what happened to those days when guys were just, I mean, w with your competition, did they learn how to call it in the ring as well? No, no, it's all no. I want to get the best out of them, and I want to make them look the best. I want them to uh, to showcase what they have, and I don't want to have any mix-ups. And, uh, and, and remember, now they're, 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 these guys are all amateurs. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not professionals. Yes, they're professionals, but they're professional amateurs. <laughs> but anyway, That's I'll let to say yeah. that I want I want them to when when I'm exposing them around the world like this, I want them to look at their best. Okay. okay. You know, and, 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 and they'll learn once the talent sees and you know, coming back to Randy Savage, I gotta tell you something that's funny too. In, in 79, I went to Nashville, Tennessee. And I was traveling with Angelo Pofo, Randy Savage, and uh, Dutch Mantel in the car. And we were traveling a lot, all four of us, you know, in the days of Gypsy Joe and George Goulas Jr. and all those times. And, uh, and, 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 and it was so funny because when I met Randy then, and I met him back in the WWF. Oh, yeah. And it was amazing. It wasn't the same guy at all. Yeah. And when I worked with him, I worked with him in the, as the Mountie in UK. You know, I, I worked at the title against him. And then Liz was in the corner. And, and, and it, was, it, it was so funny because I'll never forget. Because I'll never forget an encounter when I saw him talk with uh, Hogan. He was working with Hogan one time. And they were sitting down with each other, you know, and I could overhear the conversation, like, you know, uh, Hulk saying, well, I'd like, I want to do this at the end. And Randy saying, well, I'd like to put this in. And I, the other, uh, Hulk, I'd like to do that. And I'd like to do it. And, and, and I looked at the conversation going, I felt the kind of the, a little bit at the beginning of like, a, not animosity, but confrontational yeah. characters, you know, like coming together. And, 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 uh, and when I got into the dressing room in the UK, I remember when Randy walked in, I sat down with him and I told Randy, I said, uh, 
I said, hey, Randy, I said, we're working together tonight. You know, I said, uh, he says, oh, yes, yeah. well, I'll be with you in a minute. So I said, okay. So he goes and he does his thing. Then he comes back and sits with, with me. And then he says, uh, well, he says, you know, I'd like to. I said, Randy, Randy, stop, stop, stop. I said, before you start, I got to tell you something. I said, you know, when you come off that top rope at the end with that big elbow, I said, I want you to catch me with that. I said, you'll see, I take a hell of a shot there. And I said, and I said, he says, yeah, well, he says, yeah, that's good. That we'll finish the match. And I said, hey, Randy, I said, you know, when you grab the guy by the hair and you start running and you jump over the top rope and you guillotine the guy's neck on the rope and he takes the bump. I said, I want you to do that to me. I said, I take a hell of a bump. I take a hell of a bump. And then I start going on and on about things he want, I wanted him to do to me. And by about three minutes later, four minutes later, he looked at me and says, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> and I, said, I said, well, what do you want me to do? He says, well, you give a good drop. I, I, I brought it in a different psychology when I sat down with him. Mm. I don't know if you understand where I'm going with this. I definitely do. Go ahead. You know, and, 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 and that's the way that I got in really good. And we had a great match together. Mm. He made me look great, and I made him look great. But it was the approach that was just different. Sorry. Yeah. Jacques, what was the uh, the idea behind the transition? Uh, take us back to just your talkings with Vince and whoever was uh, on the team at that time. Of course, you and Raymond were the, the fabulous Rougeau brothers, right? And then well, we're the Rougeau brothers first. Yeah. And then I'm talking about WWE. You transitioned. Yeah, yeah. We were the back. Rougeau brothers for two yes. years. Yes. And the hearts were the the, the 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 heels. We were the baby faces. Yes, you were. And are. then we became the fabulous. The fabulous. Brothers, became and the hearts fabulous. became the baby faces. Yes, yes, that's true. <laughs> so, 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 my question is, Jacques, from from the fabulous Rougeau brothers transitioning to singles competition to the Mountie. Yeah. So, so take us back from just that type of just very just like pay up patriot. Just kind of French Canadian, like you know, Quebec type of deal, you know, uh, kind of showy and and charismatic, flamboyant, even to, to uh, in, in a sense to this just mean spirited, evil, villainous, just 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 <laughs> gut wrenching, <laughs> nasty. <laughs> Mounty, like take it, take us, take us there. As far as this, what was the idea behind the transition from a character that were really the polar opposite of each other from right. the Russo that, 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 brother to great the great question? It is. That's what gonna say. That's what gonna say. It's a great, great question. question. Uh, and, and you know, it's funny because I had a longer life for the Rougeau brothers, much for the fabulous Rougeau brothers. We could have went on for years and years, and just a conflict happened there when uh, when Bobby Enon brought a team in with Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard, and and we'd been waiting to get a run with the belts, me and Raymond, for like years. We'd always been working for the belts. The Hearts were always champions, or or some, and we wanted our position with the belts. And then finally, and Pat Patterson at the time kept telling us, "Don't." worry guys it's coming it's coming it's coming it's coming and then finally uh these guys just came in and then they just took the belts Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson they passed right in front of us and my brother Aim just said that's enough yeah. I, uh, I'm not waiting any longer so then so that put me in a position where if Raymond quits I quit too you know like we're the fabulous Rousseau brothers you know and, uh, so I went home and I started doing a couple of independent shots for Carlos Colon and a couple of places, Puerto Rico, a couple of independents that were still left. There weren't many left. So I was like almost taking a sabbatic year. At the same time, I had my first child that was born. So it just happened. So I was changing diapers. So my, so my wife was happy at the time. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I'll have to say so. So I gave her a hand there. And, uh, and then just one given day, I, uh, I got a call from Vince. And Vince uh, called me up and he said, uh, Jacques, he says, I got a, uh, I have a character I'd like for you to do. And I said, uh, okay. I was, I was very excited. I said, okay. Sure. I said, what is it? He says, uh, well, he says, uh, you're going to become a Mountie. He says, or a Royal Canadian Mounted Police. And I said, uh, okay, like a Mountie. I'm like, you know, wow, you talk about a different character. <laughs> I'm not a real policeman. You know, it's like, you want me to be a Mountie? I don't even know how to saddle a horse. You know, it's <laughs> like, uh, so it's like, okay. Uh, so he says, don't worry. He says, we'll drive you through it. We'll make. I said, uh, okay. I said, well, I said, I, 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 for sure, I'll do it. I'll do it. I said, but I, I, I want two conditions. And then he says, oh, yeah. He says, well, what's that? I says, well, first of all, I want Jimmy Hart as my manager. 
I said, because there's no better manager on this planet Earth than, than Jimmy Hart. Yeah. If I could open a parent, uh, open a, how do you say that, the, the clothes there, I just want to talk about Jimmy Hart a second. Mm -hmm. Why do I always say Jimmy Hart is the best manager in the world? There's so many reasons. He doesn't do drugs. He doesn't drink. He doesn't go out in nightclubs. Mm -hmm. He has a personal appearance, a radio station. He's there a half hour before his time. Yep. He gets on an interview. And he'll go ahead and he'll see he's one of the only managers at the time and that I only known that comes out there and he says, let me tell you something, mean you, let me tell you something about my man. My man is this, my man is that. Instead of managers coming in and saying, hey, I'm the smartest and I'm this, Jimmy Hart never took credit for nothing. The only thing he took was the time to go to a tailor and have a suit made in, 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 in our costume. Yeah. The same costume as his world. Jimmy Hart was the best manager of all time. So that's when I told Vince, I said, I want to have Jimmy Hart as my manager, and I want to bring in an electric shock stick. Because I remember just, that. Yeah. And I said, and I said that because I remember when I was younger, Eddie Creechman, Abdullah the Butcher's manager up in Quebec, Eddie the Brain Creechman, he had that stick and he scared the hell out of me in the dressing room so much I almost peed myself. Because you <laughs> know I was so I was so afraid of it. And and and, he, and everywhere he went with that stick, everybody was just throwing themselves away from him. So I said, if people and if I believed it and people believed it, then people are gonna believe my stick too. Mm -hmm. So, so, uh, so, and it was real. Uh, it was a real stick. It was a stick where my friend uh, built it with a lawnmower coil. He took a lawnmower, put it apart, and he took the negative and the positive, crossed it wires. And at the end, there was a big, big, <laughs> something like awesome. It was a big lawnmower coil. And, and I was, yeah, it was something. Ask Coco Beware one day. <laughs> He'll tell you it worked. Uh, and, uh, he got shocked. <laughs> Oh my God! He got. You know what? He got shocked, Rousseau. He got shocked, oh, Rousseau. Shocked real. Rousseau. Okay, a little fun there. Hey, listen, I gotta tell you this. This is funny because I meet Coco. I met him just the other day, as a matter of fact, yeah. in, in, in in the uh, the, uh, the Comic Con we were there, all yeah. of us. And then yeah. and, and uh, but but Coco loves me to death. We're great friends, me and him. And and we we were in Memphis, Tennessee, in 1980 before WWF, and when he was Sweet Brown Sugar. Anyway, I'll let to say that Coco Beware is a great great friend of mine. So the first match I have coming in as the Mountie, the first one, it's against Coco Beware. So I got this big stick, and I got I got two buttons on my stick. I got a switch here off and on, and I got a switch here emergency off and on. Oh. Just to make sure that you know, I don't, I don't kill anybody with that thing because it's kind of powerful. So we have a 15, 20 minute match, me and Coco, and he's soaking wet. And don't ask me how I did it. Nervous because it's my first match as the Mountie. So nervous. All the boys are sitting in the back. It's a TV station, a TV show, TV taping. Everybody's there. So I'm so nervous. I'm going out for the Mountie as the first time. Not very comfortable. Very awkward in the in the character. It's my first time breaking the ice. So I get in the ring. I have a great match with Coco, and at the end, I grab my stick. And then don't ask me how I did it, guys. I flipped the wrong button on, no. and then I went. And I start zapping him. And when I start zapping him, he starts flipping and flopping like in the ring like a fish. And I'm going like, wow, this guy's putting my gimmick over. Good, man. This is good. And then it starts smelling pig skin. Mm. You know, like when it burns, yeah, the skin when it burns. So yeah. I'm going like this, like, wow, Vince is awesome with his special effects. This is really <laughs> awesome. You know, and so I go back. Wow. I'm, I'm so stupid and ignorant. I go back to the dressing room, and I'm waiting for Coco to come through the curtains and to give me the biggest hug in the world, and he wanted to kick my butt. Mm. He came out of there. I'm not going to even say none of the words mm. that he was saying. Coming at me with a face like he wanted to kill me. I was afraid. He kind of wanted to oh. jump me, and the guy stopped sure. him. And I'm going like, whoa, 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 whoa. He said, you shot me. You shot me. And I'm going, no, I didn't. He said, yeah, you didn't. And he showed me his skin. It was burnt. And and, oh. and, 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 and it's so funny because I'm That's saying to funny, myself, right. I'm saying to myself, all the boys are sitting there. And this just happened. I could just imagine one guy saying, he ain't going to do that to me. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, and I'm, 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 and I'm feeling so horrible and bad. And over the years, every time I see Coco now, I always send someone in a Comic-Con or something to go see him say, hey, is it true that Mountie Stick is for real? You know, mm. and then we, we a, always That's a great story. That's a great story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I got a real quick question for you. Then we got a couple super chats. I'm going to wrap it up. So my question to you is, 
Um, why don't you think that you are in the Hall of Fame currently with yeah. the career that you've had? Oh, my God. You know what? I took some notes. I was hoping you'd say something like that. Mm, very nice. <laughs> very nice. But for two years, we worked the Heart Foundation. We were baby face. They were heels. And the hearts are in there. I think Brit's in there twice. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you wrestling is a dance. You don't dance by yourself. It takes two to tangle. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then two more years we worked the hearts. I worked with the Rockers. We did marathon matches, one hour, one hour matches in the Madison Square Garden. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about Tupelo, Mississippi here. I'm talking about the Madison Square Garden where we did our matches and so we did overseas. I had the matches like the Big Boss Man Jailhouse match, you know, the yeah. one where everybody is iconic. Everybody remembers when I went to spend the night in jail and all the in between the matches, between every match, the fingerprints and the getting locked up with the, the gay guy in the jail at the end and the oh, whole thing. Right. And, Everybody. You know that was, you know that was iconic. I mean, there was arenas around the world that were sold out, mm -hmm. and there was no wrestling in it. It was just giant screens. Mm -hmm. You know, it was amazing. And and, and then three times tag team champions with the yeah. Quebecers. Yeah. Close. Yeah. You know, yeah. I spent I spent eleven years giving my heart and soul to that business. Yeah. yeah. And I don't understand. And if anything, to be honest with you, if anything. How come the Rougeau name is not in there? Like we're mm -hmm. four generations of wrestlers. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's something wrong. You could have the most beautiful house on a mountain, but if you don't have a good foundation to the house, the house is going to crumble one day. Yeah, yeah. And I think we're part of that foundation. And I and I also think Rick Martel is, is, should be in the Hall of Absolutely. Fame. Absolutely. I think Demolition should be yeah. in the Hall of Fame. I think uh -huh. there's so many guys that should be in the Hall of Fame. And I think they should honestly there. I honestly think I know I had some heat. In the business, I know that my, I was I was arrogant. I I, I know who I was. I, 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 Speaking I, of Rick, Rick Martel, you were you were wearing his cologne, right? Arrogance, <laughs> <laughs> arrogance. But, but, but that will get on that. But you know what? You know what? It, it's different now because there's a new administration. Triple H is, and I always say this: he's a diehard wrestling fan, which is why, like somebody like Thunderbolt Patterson, who was never in WWE, yeah. Is going in this year so i have I'm a happy feeling, for him right but i have a feeling that through the years now it's going to be people like you and yes. your brother and other people that haven't been in there i think triple h is going to help make that rich history i, I hope mr so. levike uh, turns his eye to the to the, to the french canadians and you know and then there's a lot of them in there and that, that that could be in there and i and i think that we paid our dues and we and, and it's funny because i went in front of twenty thousand people crowds around the world and i i wasn't just a match on the card i was always one of the matches that was put on last like sometimes hulk was on the card and they put hulk after the intermission or yeah. before the intermission, then they put us on last to finish the show. Sure. You know, because they knew they'd have a great match to finish the show, to close yeah. the show up. I, I think we deserve to be there. I'm trying humbly to say it as much as I can, but Paul yeah. Levike, I think you should really look at the Rougeau name to put it in there. It's I think, so long. And, and my brother Raymond had, I think, the best philosophy of this. He would say the, the only way he thinks that we're going to be in the Hall of Fame is if we have a WrestleMania in Montreal. If we have a WrestleMania in Montreal, because sometimes a lot of politics are mixed into the WrestleMania people that get in there. Mm -hmm. So if they came to Montreal, then maybe we have a chance to be put in yeah. the hall. Yeah, and plus your your uh, the history of the Rougeaus, your your father. My I mean, uncle Johnny, my father, yeah, you know, yeah. Eddie Oje, my granduncle, yes, you know, and my, yeah. and my three sons. You know, yeah. anyway, all, that, all, all this to say that uh, thanks for bringing this up because – you know, but I one thing happened to me, guys, that it's on a much smaller scale, but but it means the world to me. There's a federation last year, and and and, and uh, comment s'appelle la fédération en Ontario. Le, He's donné, talking that secret code. code again, Chris. Mm -hmm. Oh, je, je comprends. Project, je comprends project, français. Stop, stop, <laughs> my girlfriend, she's my brain sometimes. So so yeah. Project X Wrestling in Sudbury, Ontario. It's a new company they started a couple of years ago. They started a Hall of Fame in Canada, and I was the first inductee in Canada. Congratulations! So it's not not on a scale compared to but to the but I was hey baby you know steps what? man baby steps. But I was yeah. but I was so flattered that 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 they chose me like that, and it gave me a sense of self esteem. Yeah, and you know, so so I want to thank Project X for that. And I'll never so forget another, that day that uh, on another occasion, what I'd like to talk about with you and Chris to hear the story 
is I was there the first night that WWF took over in Montreal at the Forum with Hulk Hogan in the main event. And Rick Martel was there. Uh, Raymond was there. I don't remember. Were you there as well? Yeah, for you sure. Were I was there, there as well. And I'm going to tell you something, Bill. I'm going to tell you something you did not know. Before they came, that wasn't the first night they came to WWF. The first night they came, it was at the Verdun Auditorium in front of 5,000 people. They were competing against Dino Bravo and Ricky Martel's international right. wrestling. Right. And, right. I, and I was having a dispute with those guys in Montreal. So they booked me in the main event against Samu for the WWE in the in, in the main event. And I'll tell you about that story that my dad came to the airport and told me, don't do it, don't do it, because if you open the doors to them, they're going to take over the world after that. Like you I know? think we need to do a part two. Yeah. And yeah. Come on, and <laughs> Real quick, let me uh, let me do these uh, questions here. Real quick. Ryan uh, Woolrich, $2, is asking, Hi, Jacques, what was your first car and job you had? Wow. My first car? Holy mackerel, it was a Dodge, a Demon. <laughs> and, and my first job I did, I don't know, because when I started the first year or so, my father kept putting me over in Montreal. <laughs> he was starting to No, not me. wrestling. So Maybe I, the first job you oh, had. Oh, 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 not not job a job in the ring. In the ring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my first job I had was peeling potatoes in a little hot dog stand. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. And then finally, Rollin, 1999, thank you for your contribution. Saturday night's main event, Mountie versus Roddy Piper for the IC title. You poured H2O on Piper before using the shock stick to no avail. Piper <laughs> used the shock stick on you and one who came up with the idea for Piper to wear the shockproof vest. 100% mine. Uh, it was okay. mine. It was 100% my idea. I wanted to find a way to drop the title only two days, three days after I'd won it. So I, I, uh, I didn't want to look like the biggest jabroni ever. So I, uh, I thought of something that would be fun. And when I brought it up to Vince and to Piper, they loved the idea. And so, so I was, I was very happy. Thank you. I'm, I'm very happy uh, to take credit for that. Hey, well, you'll still go in the history books as former intercontinental champion. So. Hey, Chris, it's so funny because when I go in Comic Cons and I go sign pictures all around the world, everybody has pictures of me with the belt, and I was the yeah. shortest lived intercontinental champion hey, that ever existed. So be it. Yeah, it's I'm time right. for you to go in and beat Gunther. <laughs> ah, is it, is hey, it that one time? Day, one day on the next podcast, we'll tell we'll talk about the only Canadian ever to pin Hulk Hogan. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I remember I you. Think, we we talked about that you and I before, and uh, yes, I sir. You, you, you tell me about that. So. How did it? How did it? Check did that out. Know. Check that out. Huh? Hey, Check the, that out. The, the shortest <laughs> lived intercontinental. Test. Hey, but hey, it's in the record books, man. <laughs> record books. All right, let the listeners know uh, the uh, w websites once again. Please, wrestling-academy.ca. If you have a chance to put it on the bottom one more time, thank you so much. That's in English and in French. In case it doesn't work in English, some countries, lutacademy.ca. And check that out, guys, and go check out the competition this year. It's going to be amazing, the talent. You'll have a lot of fun following this. Fantastic. Yeah, we got to take a trip up there, Chris, one yes. of these days and check uh, this I'm, out. I'm game for that. We'll do yeah. the U.S. broadcast. Yes, Thank we'll you. do. Yes, <laughs> we'll, we'll, I'll be, the, we'll be, we'll be the Raymond Rougeau of uh, the uh, of, Ca of Canada. We'll, we'll that do would the, be uh, awesome. You know what? My, my brother Raymond brought that up because you know if you go on YouTube, we have it on YouTube. The show, like you go on my website, you'll see. You can click on it. It's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But we do French and English commentating at the same time. So a little yes. line of French, a little of English. So my brother Raymond told me this year. He says. Why don't you put a little money in the budget there and have three guys doing English and three guys doing French? Yeah, yeah. Ah, the unscripted bros. I can you guys, do, you guys I can only do. Uh, yeah. I can only do fake French. Je les perds, je les tombes <laughs> <laughs> You'll need a few lessons there. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Hopefully, I didn't curse you out. Well, uh, no, you uh, didn't. Au revoir, uh, my, my, my friend. Uh, Bonsoir, mon ami. Bonsoir. Et merci beaucoup, mes amis. Merci beaucoup. Mine de sounded, de mine de sounded de better. Rien, de rien. Mine sounded better. I'm you're good, Chris. No, you're I'm good, actually Chris. speaking French. You're, 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 you are. You are. You're horrible. Bill, you're horrible. Bill, you're horrible. <laughs> Thank you. Adios. You. <laughs> Jacques Rousseau, Bill After. I'm Dr. Chris. Have a good night, everybody. We'll this is Unscripted. Bonsoir. So